Hi folks and uh, welcome back to Isle of Wight Bushcraft and uh, this time out we'll be out foraging food for free so stay tuned So this time out guys, I'm out in, the, in various forests, uh, in a few different places looking for some uh, fungi, berries, uh, greens and the like, foraging food for free. Now sometimes we might not think that there's much to forage, but um, once we become familiar with various plants, greens and fungi, particularly in autumn, this time of the year, there is uh, ample uh, amounts of free food in the forest, hills and so forth that we can forage and uh, that's what we're dealing with in this video. So, so we'll start off um, by looking in a local area that I know where we may find some chicken of the woods. And uh, we've come across a great find, um, a good one this time of the year, a little bit later here on the Isle of Wight because the, uh, the temperatures are, are just a little bit milder, uh, but we've come across a, a great find of some uh, chicken in the woods uh, Latoporus sulfurius, the Latin name. Don't ask me how I remember that. <laughs> but uh, it's a lovely fungi, this. Um, had some yesterday, did a 24 hour test just to make sure that there's no uh, allergic reaction. Not a toxic mushroom, but you can have a, a, an allergic reaction to it, but it's very, very, very small percentage of people. Most people don't. But just to make sure, just have a little piece the night before and wait 24 hours. If you're okay, then you know for the rest of your life you can eat it no problem at all. Not toxic, just can be an allergic reaction. So what I'm going to do, bring you in and uh, just show you this lovely find on this uh, old willow tree of uh, chicken of the woods. We've got some down here and also a lot on the other side. So there's uh, plenty to forage. So uh, come in and have a look. Well, as you can see, there's uh, plenty of it here, a lot of it, and uh, brought a net bag. Always good to keep your, your mushroom stuff in a net bag. Two reasons. A, it stops them um, sweating and getting all uh, clammy and um, losing their freshness, really. And secondly, as you're carrying them, you're, uh, you're helping to disperse the spores of your fungi for, uh, for the next generation. So you've got, um, you, know, you have more to collect in the future. So what I'm gonna do now, take my knife and just harvest some of this i'm not going to take all of the fans of these at uh, this chicken woods i'm just going to take kind of that um kind of halfway in you know and uh, some of it's a little bit that's not too bad this stuff here is fresh nice and fresh fairly young so i'm going to harvest some of these but take about halfway into the fans you go too far back you'll, you'll fill with your knife it can get a little bit fibrous um we don't want that we want this softer on the outside but this is a prime example so um well uh, we'll have some of this so we'll take the knife there some of this nice these nice younger fans and you can feel as you cut through it if it's quite nice and soft to cut through then that's um that's the stuff you want look at that lovely chicken of the woods you've got that sulfurous yellow color underneath and that lovely um, ochre orangey colour on top. Lovely chicken in the woods. Yeah. This is perfectly, perfectly good chicken of the woods. A great find. Really pleased with this one. Now these are sulphur tufts. Quite young ones. And uh, you wouldn't eat these, um, there's no flavour and um, they can be, you can react to them, they, are, they have got toxins in them. Um, these are really best uh, left well alone, but they are just beautiful to look at. So uh, you see them on the forest floor like that. Um, couldn't walk by and not just um, admire the, how uh, beautiful they are. They're sulphur tuft. <laughs>
It's just a little bit early for the chestnuts yet, but uh, give it about two weeks, three weeks, and uh, we'll be back for some of these. So having foraged some choice chicken of the woods in our local area, we then spread our wings and ventured a little further afield to a place that we know yields wild mushrooms in abundance. Well, we've changed the locations. Uh, we were on the Isle of Wight uh, foraging, but now we're up here in the Highlands uh, foraging in and around these, uh, these mountains and these, uh, these birch uh, forests. And uh, this time we're after some chaga, hopefully we'll get some of that, and some chanterelles as well. And we've got my buddy Nick with me who's out, and uh, we're on a day's foraging up here in these, uh, in these hills and mountains around us, in the forest. So hopefully we'll have a fruitful day. So uh, let's get cracking. Well, uh, we're uh, out in this lovely bit of woodland uh, up in the Highlands again, and I'm out with a buddy today, Nick, and um, we're hunting for chanterelles and also chaga, and we've just found a lovely piece of chaga on this gnarly old birch tree here, so we'll take you on over and we'll have a look at it. Okay, so here we are, guys, a lovely piece of chaga on this old birch tree here. We've got a lovely lump here, and also there's a really nice big lump at the bottom of the tree, which Nick uh, spotted. So what we're going to do is we're going to harvest this and harvest this lump and um, I think that's all we'll need today, uh, for today to be honest, it's a lovely lump. So uh, come and have a closer look. So we'll just take some of this off. Oh, it's a, it's a hard old bit. There we go. Lovely piece of chaga. Look at that. So we'll leave, uh, we'll leave some on the tree to re regrow. So um, these bits on the outside, I'll, I'll leave that, leave that to keep growing. Uh, but we'll take this lump here as well. So here we go. We've got a lovely piece here. So we've, we've taken the piece at the top of the tree, and uh, we've got a quite a big piece here as well, which we're going to harvest. Uh, and this is a lovely piece. This is. Okay, so we take this piece here, as we said. Oh, that's come off in. Whoa, that's a nice piece. <laughs> that's a big piece of chaga. Look at the size of that. Beautiful. I'll take that one. Okay, there's another one. So as I say, out with my buddy Nick today, up in the Scottish Highlands, and uh, Nick's just spotted this lovely patch of chanterelles, which uh, is going to harvest, and we'll be having those, uh, frying those up in the pan for lunch. Uh, let's go in and take a closer look. So there's some lovely ones here, lovely choice ones, buried in the undergrowth really didn't see these until i was almost stood right on top of them looked at my foot to see where i was putting my foot 
and spotted a big, big bunch of them. And really, you've got to cut them. Don't forget to cut them with a knife so they can regrow. If you rip them up, you're destroying them. Right, so as Shane said, we were walking along looking for chaga. We stood by this tree here, looked down at my feet, and look what we found. Loads of chanterelles. So put them in, and really, you can only just spot them. They're virtually the same colour as the leaves. Yeah, so Shane has uh, taught me how to identify these, the habitat, under birch trees. You really sometimes can hardly see them. You've got to keep your eye in for them. But we found a lovely patch here. And that's going to be lunch. So this is our chanterelle. You can see the younger ones are a lovely saffron yellow colour. As they get a bit older, they tend to be a bit paler. So the way you can tell is that you see the gills, you'll see them in a shot in a minute. They run down into the stem, they're decurrent gills. And they're really quite large and wavy. And when you cut it, the flesh inside is white. And that's how you know you've got chanterelles. So having found and foraged copious amounts of choice chanterelle mushrooms, we continued our forage through the forest. And it wasn't too long before we happened upon another gnarly old birch tree which contained another nice piece of chaga. Well folks, we've just uh, come across these two trees here. We've got a small piece of chaga up there, not really worth uh, harvesting, but a lovely piece here again, which we're going to harvest, and a really nice, uh, medium-sized piece just up this tree here. So what we'll do is we'll take this piece first. This is a lovely piece. <laughs> and then we headed down toward the quiet shores of this beautiful lock where we found ourselves a lovely little spot where we could enjoy a tasty lunch bushcraft style. Okay, so what we've done, we've been walking through and uh, hiking through the woods. Um, I say hike, walking really. Um, <laughs> a bit of an exaggeration to call it a hike. But uh, yeah, we've been looking for uh, forageables. We found some lovely chaga and these gorgeous chanterelles, which Nick's just cleaning up. We're going to cook these up. As you can see, we're in a lovely spot. We've just put these little uh, day hammocks that we have. put them up so we can sit down and maybe have a, a recline for and just enjoy the, the scenery and the ambience but um, we're going to cook these up out of these chanterelles and make a, a nice lunch for ourselves. 
And uh, we're looking forward to eating those, aren't we, Nick? We definitely are, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, Nick's just cleaning them up. Chef Shane's going to cook them up. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, let's get them uh, on the go. They were in the ground 25 minutes ago. 25 minutes ago. Straight from almost straight from the ground. They've got a nice sear on them now as well. Oh, they do smell good. Let's take some out of it. Well, they are they're about ready, Nick, aren't they? Look good. So, should we uh, have a try? Oop, drop one there. Oh, delicious. They are delicious, aren't they? Mm, delicious. They, they are delicious. Mm. Lovely. They are good though. Meaty, aren't they? Yeah, they're delicious. Lovely, isn't it? Beautiful. Well, we've had lunch and uh, just having this um, hot chocolate, actually, we're having. So we're going to finish this off and uh, carry on our foraging. And then uh, we'll probably head on back. Well, that was a lovely lunch. Those mushrooms were uh, really nice, weren't they, Nick? Those mushrooms were delicious. Yeah, delicious. They really were. And it's such be as delicious as these galaxy mushrooms I brought with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such beautiful country around us as well. As you can see, you've got the lock behind me and um, the forest all around. It, it, and it's so peaceful, there's just nobody. We haven't seen a soul. It's so peaceful and out the way up here. We haven't seen anyone, have we? No. We haven't seen anybody, not one single person. But um, it is the, the highlands of Scotland. It, it, it really is beautiful up here. Yeah, I think the Scottish are very fortunate people to have this on their doorstep. But uh, as I say, we're having a lovely foraging uh, session this time out, but I dare say that we'll be up at some point to do a, a wild camp and bushcraft trip proper. So anyway, we're gonna drink this and uh, carry on. to say viewers that I'm washing this in the air because Shane's using my cloth to, to keep his pot off the stove. Oh. Look at the colour of that water. Lovely. 
Well, having enjoyed a superb wild mushroom lunch of the highest order beside this beautiful log, we continued to press on in our search for more delectable fruits of the forest. As well as the different varieties of mushrooms that we were collecting, we also foraged for some juicy fresh blueberries which were also present in this part of the forest.
Well, we're in this uh, lovely spot here, but um, it's so sad that we're in such a beautiful part of Scotland and um, somebody's been encamped here. They've been to toilet in the bushes just there, left all their toilet paper and you don't know what, a, uh, you don't really want to know what else. But yards from the actual water, they've left cans, bits of old chairs, plastic bags, beer bottles and uh, red ball cans. I mean, there's just really no need for it. And I don't understand it. I mean, we just talked to my buddy Nick. It's such a beautiful place. Why ruin it? I mean, it just shows a complete lack of appreciation. And uh, it's so sad to see because this is such a beautiful place. We were saying it's like giving this land a kick in the teeth. They've enjoyed it and they just don't care anymore. There's just really no need for it. Let's look after the country. Uh, Nick and I thought that this was a little bit ironic, bearing in mind that we're making a video for the uh, Isle of Wight Bushcraft channel on YouTube. We thought you are being watched was very fitting. <laughs> there we are. Hopefully we are being watched. Well, that's our, um, that's our foraging in the highlands um, finished. So we're back down here on the Isle of Wight now, um, foraging for berries and uh, mushrooms and so forth. The thing we'll do now is head along the coast where I know we can uh, forage some uh, various different greens, uh, which I do enjoy eating as well. So uh, we're crowding on and uh, head to the coast. Along this stretch of coastline, all manner of forageables can be found, such as sea beet, rock samphire, auric, sea purslin, as well as a variety of shellfish and various seaweeds. So as you can see here, we've uh, come across some uh, lovely sea beet. Uh, this is a lovely green. And there's some good examples here and um, uh, a great forageable this is. It grows along the coast um, and slightly inland, but mainly along the coast. Uh, but this is a really good green. So this will go with our mushrooms and so forth. It's a shame Nick's not here. Uh, Nick's had to, um, as we were coming down country, Nick parted ways and uh, headed back to Devon. Uh, so I hope you're well Nick and, uh, and Becky of course but uh, yeah lovely forageable here on the coast these uh, this sea beet it's a really nice green so we'll take some of these and uh, there we are a few more along the way, I know there's some more up there. 
Um, always got to be careful if the, if the dogs have been along here, of course. But, um, yeah. This will do us, I think, for the time moving. Move a little bit further along. Just some of the uh, some of the foods that we foraged. Got some uh, some lovely juicy blackberries, always good to eat. And, uh, blueberries. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get these locally, but these uh, certainly get these in the Highlands. And some lovely lovely sorrel there. That's uh, really nice to eat. And of course, a trusty old chaga, which makes lovely tea. Very very good for you. And uh, delicious chanterelles, they are so nice to eat. Nice uh, young dandelion leaves, always good in a salad. And again, very good for you. And of course our sea beet, uh, which we, uh, we forage our local beach, not too far away from here, about 10 minute walk. And uh, that's a really good green. Some, uh, some nice uh, some kelp there. Always good to have a bit of kelp or seaweed in your diet. It helps to uh, boost your iodine. So that's very good. If you are going to eat seaweed, uh, just be mindful to introduce it slowly into your diet. Not to eat too much, it can make you a little bit loose. So there we are. Some lovely foraged food. Food for free. Doesn't cost a penny. And certainly a lot more nutritious than uh, most of the food that you can buy. There we are. It can be done. Admittedly, you may not be able to get all of these uh, foods from your immediate area, but there'll always be forageables um, in and around the countryside. So uh, there we are, a nice little haul. Well, thanks for joining us, guys, on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a lovely trip and it just shows you what's out there. So uh, hopefully this has inspired you guys to maybe go out and forage a bit of food. Uh, one thing, it's forage food, very nutritious and uh, extremely tasty as well, which is uh, a big plus. And um, there's just a satisfaction. And as I'm talking now, I've just seen a red squirrel just dart up that tree there. He didn't even know I was here. Lovely sight. Sorry to interrupt there, but I, I couldn't help but mention that. That was a lovely surprise. Yes, there's, a, there's as I was saying, there's much to forage out there. There's a, there's a sense in satisfaction in going out foraging food, bringing it home to the kitchen, preparing it and cooking it up and enjoying the eating of it. So uh, hopefully it's inspired you guys. Appreciate you joining me, like I say, and uh, all being well, I'll see you in the next video. So take care and uh, bye for now.